Sports Radio, Brila FM. All right, all the way from Istanbul in Turkey, I want to specially welcome Super Eagle skipper, Joseph Yobo. Joe, we are glad to have you on Sports Radio, Brila FM. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I hope you enjoyed your Easter holidays. Yeah, Easter was great. You know, my mom and family, they're all over here. So it was a great time. It was a special time. Um, you know, so I had a great Easter. That's wonderful. And uh, let's briefly talk about your club, Fenebache. Last weekend, uh, you won uh, two goals to nothing against Akil Belida. But uh, you didn't get to play in that match. What really happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. We won the game. Um, I was arrested um, because um, we have a very important game on Thursday, UEFA Cup quarterfinals against Lazio. And I've been playing since I got back from the African Nations Cup. So probably I needed a break. So um, hopefully I'll be ready for Thursday. And they're still talking about the Turkish league. Fenerbahce is second behind Galatasaray, four points. And uh, you think uh, your club can still uh, make this happen this season? Yeah, I think uh, we lost the championship to Galatasaray on the last day of last season. And um, this season we're four points behind. And uh, I'm looking forward to a We can still make it. Everything is still very possible and in our hands. We have Galatasaray to play at home, which is going to be a big decider for the championship. So, um, I think we still have time. It's about eight, nine games to go, and um, I think Fenerbahce can become champions this season. And of course, uh, with big names now turning out for Galatasaray, I'm talking about the Drogba, Wesley Snyder, and the rest of them. Yeah, it's never, it's never been easy. We have some quality players. We have um, Emre, the um, Turkish national team, cutting his back with us. We have uh, Merylis, we have Kais. We have some big name players. We have Musaso doing so great. I'm back in the team from the African Nations Cup. So we're looking very, very strong. You know, we can match anybody even in Europe. So it's going to be an exciting game when we play Galatasaray at home and that's going to decide the championship. All right, uh, let's come back home. I must say many Nigerians were surprised that, that, that you were not in action in the World Cup qualifier against the Arambe Stars of Kenya. And I'm sure they would like to hear directly from you. What really happened? I don't know. I was, uh, you know, I thought um, we won the African Nations Cup. We got back to Nigeria, we were celebrated, and then everybody went back to their club. You know, I don't know what happened. Since then, no one has been in contact with me. I focused on my club and, and, and to come back and start playing. So I was surprised that I wasn't on the list. You know, so everything was, was new to me. I was surprised like everyone. I, I have no clue what happened. I was just, you know, I wasn't even told the list came out. And then I wasn't on the list, so it was a surprise to me the same way everyone was surprised. Uh, that is shocking. Uh, you mean you were not in touch uh, with uh, the chief coach, uh, Stephen Keshi, ahead of uh, that match against Kenya? No, we, we haven't spoken since after the African Nations Cup. Nobody got, he didn't get in, get in touch with me. He didn't contact me, you know, and, I, I thought we had a relationship, you know, and, and you know, but he, he proved me wrong because there was no communication. If I'm the captain of the, of the national team, the Super Eagles that just won the African Nations Cup, and then the next qualifying game, I, not even a phone call was put through to me, then, you know, that was very disrespectful. But probably that's the way he chose to do it. He has his reason for doing it, but he didn't communicate to me. We have no communication at all. So, obviously, you were disappointed that you were not called up uh, for the match against the... Uh the Kenyans, and of course, most more importantly, that uh, there was no communication between you and the technical crew. Yeah, exactly, because um, I think we, we spoke a little bit, we won the Nations Cup, everybody was happy. If it was about me retiring from the national team, it's, it's an easy option for me, because I think I've done a lot for my country, you know, but if you want me there, it has to be special, and, and, and it's a qualifying game. I said it before that I wanted to carry on, and we both agreed, and then you go ahead. And, and naming the team list and leaving me out without communicating with me, I think um, that's not proper. He didn't get in touch with me. We haven't spoken since after the African Nations Cup, you know. Everybody, they said at the Nations Cup that I was injured. I came back here, tried to prove my fitness, was working really hard and was, I've been playing ever since after the Nations Cup for my club. So I was more concentrating on uh, my club career to prove to people that, you know, I'm still relevant. I can still do it at the highest level, even the Europa Cup. But I was surprised, same as, same as everyone was. That, you know, not even a phone call was put through to me. Hmm. That is understandable. And then uh, we will have to talk about your relationship uh, with uh, the chief coach of the team, Steve Keshi. I think the impression we had before now is that uh, you have a very, very good and cordial relationship. Yeah, you know, I think um, he, he was around, you know, like, you know, he was around when I started applying. 
No, so and then he left. He didn't make it to the World Cup. He left, and then when he came back, being somebody that I've known for over a decade, you know, I I always knew what he can bring to the table. So I thought we had a relationship. Everything started well, you know. But you know, he proved me wrong, you know. So I think there is no working relationship at all because if there was one, there was going to be communication between us, which you know he didn't want to communicate with me with his decisions that he was making. So I think um. That is definitely a problem, or he has issues with me that he's refusing to speak out about because, you know, I'm I'm not aware of anything, and there is there is no communication. There's a communication breakdown between us, and that shows that there is a problem also. Some issues that he has that he doesn't want to speak out about. And then what about your relationship with the assistant coaches? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to call names when it comes to um, you know the assistant coaches, but. You know, I think so, someone feels intimidated by my presence and my achievement. That's point blank period. Somebody, someone feels intimidated by my achievement and by my presence. You know, and, and someone feels that I'm in some sort of competition with with him. You know, if your playing days are over and you should stick to being a coach, but I'm putting no names to this. So there is a lot that is going on. You know, I'm not aware, but when it comes to speaking out the truth, and and this is this is the truth, and there's a lot of what is happening. But basically. For the chief coach, there is a communication breakdown, and we haven't spoken since. And as I said, the assistant coach, you know, I've said what I have to say. And then, have you made any attempt to actually reach the chief coach after the match against Kenya? Have you talked since then? No, I, I felt disappointed. I'm, I'm a national team captain. If you, if you if you think so that you know I'm the national, you, you could have been an easy option to come out and like I don't want just a people no more. It's very easy to say that, you know. And but nobody said that. So I was left out. I wish the team very well. I sent text messages to people. Even I spoke to one or a couple of my teammates wishing them well. I want Super Eagles to do well. You know, even if I'm not there, I'm going to be a Super Eagles fan because I gave 11 and a half or 12 years of my life to the Super Eagles. I'm, I'm a big part of whatever is going on now. Whatever transition is going on now, I'm a big part of it. You know, but I wasn't communicating with. You know, I, I felt very disrespectful. I've, I've spent this mission for so long. So if people choose to, to do that way, then you know, I might just be silent and concentrate on my, my club career. But I, I haven't spoken to him. But I thought, you know, he's, he's the boss. He's in charge. He makes the list. He should call his players. You know, not the other way around. I'm not going to be chasing the coach. I'm not going to be begging to play for the national team. So I'm just concentrating on my club career. I must admit that this is worrisome because uh, the impressions I'm sure many Nigerians had after the Nations Cup is that uh, we have a team and that uh, we are ready for the future. But with these uh, revelations right now, obviously, I mean, things are not right, so to say, in the camp of the Super Eagles right now. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I wasn't there in Calabar. I don't know what happened, you know, but, you know, for this, you know, for this change to happen so immediately after we just won the African Nations Cup, we are champions. This, this, is, this is a big moment for the Super It's supposed to be all celebration. And then the captain was being left out without even a phone call. I can understand if he wants to do certain things. And at least put a phone call to me. That shows respect. That shows that because I have been very supportive to him and his crew towards this, this transition in the national team. You know, so I, I was very surprised, but, you know, as I said, his assistant, you know, someone feels intimidated by my presence and achievement. And, you know, there is a lot that is going on, but it's not something that I have to say today. I'm just disappointed that nobody even spoke to me. And then you call me a national team captain, point blank, period. Yes, that is very understandable. And again, uh, some weeks back, Emmanuel Emenike also alleged that... Uh, the chief coach never got in touch with him uh, since uh, he was injured at the Nations Cup and he was really very bitter about that. Yeah, I can understand, you know, Emmanuel Menike, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's somebody that, you know, I think, um, I, I, you know, I'm very happy that he's somebody that I brought to the national team and he's doing so well. You know, a lot happens in the national team that people do not know about, but it's not something to speak. I fall into the same category as well. When I was injured, a lot happened when I got injured in September, Liberia away. A lot happened that I don't want to talk about now. So I can understand where Minika is coming from because it is very disappointing and you feel that, oh, the world is, is pushing you over just because you got injured. So I've been in that situation. I understand where he's coming from, but... You know, thank God for his grace that he's, he's recuperating um, very well now and so he's not playing for his club. We must have your impression uh, about uh, the match against uh, Kenya. It almost uh, ended disastrously for Nigeria until the extra time when we got the equalizer. The Kenyans 
came to Nigeria, harassed the Super Eagles, and uh, almost uh, ran away with the maximum points. Yeah, I think um, I, I, you know, I wanted to look for a way to watch that game or follow it up. But I was training that day. You know, our training time changed. I was actually training. I was surprised when I came back and I had a lot of messages, text messages and, you know, voice messages on my phone, how the game went. And Nigeria equalized at the last minute. You know, I'm happy that at least we got a point out of the game because, you know, it could have gone anyway. And if we lost, it could have been very disastrous. So I'm happy because that still gives us a chance of making it to the World Cup. I want to see Nigeria, Nigeria in the World Cup. I think it's going to be great after winning the African Nations Cup. You know, it's going to be disappointing after winning it and not making it to the World Cup. So I think it must have been a tough game. But I think also it's lesson learned. You know, you don't take things for granted. And so what do you think are chances of actually making it to the 2014 World Cup in Brazil? Yeah, I think um, the chances are very open for every nation. The most important thing is, you know, now I'm, I'm a believer, so I always put God first, you know, with God, everything is possible. But it's never easy as well, especially when you go to these away games. It's, it's never easy. I've been there, you know, I've been there for many years, and you know, I, I know how hard it is. It's never easy. The pitches are not always, you know, there is a lot to win. You know, but right now it's time for the team to come together. We had a great, a great team spirit. You know that we already built, especially in South Africa. So I was hoping for that continuity, that continuation of that. You know, so that's what it needs to come back. The Eagles need to come together. The Eagles needs to be solid again, because that's what helps us win the African Nations Cup. And if the Eagles are like that, that means you know they can they can challenge anything. They can they can beat anybody on their day. But it's never going to be easy. It's going to be fight till the end. And I need to confirm from you again that uh, you are still ready to play for Nigeria, that uh, you are ready to continue to mentor some of the young players who are just coming into the team. I'm talking about uh, the likes of uh, Kenneth Tomeru, held as in the Chejile, particularly in the back line of the Super Eagles. Yeah, definitely. But um, with everything that has happened, you know, playing for Eagles has always been very special to me. I played under 8 9 coaches, if I'm not, you know, I tend to be corrected. You know, and every one of them made it special to me because they know what I bring to the team. If it's come to this point and there is no communication, then you know it's gonna be very it's gonna be very difficult, you know. So there must be some sort of communication and understanding. I cannot turn my, my, my father's land down, you know, if I'm called upon because I still think I am very, very relevant. You understand? I'm very I'm still showing it in a European competition. That is that is one of the highest level of football. You know, most people at my age they're probably retired or they're struggling. You know, we know the age is the age problem in Africa as well. But I'm in this situation. I am still relevant playing almost every game for my, my, my team. I'm playing for Fenerbahce Football Club, not just a regular team. So I think that gives me an edge that I can still do it for the national team. I can't turn them down. But at some point, definitely, with everything that is happening right now, I have to, you know, look at it again and, and speak to a few people. And if I'm not happy about it, then you know, I'll make a decision. Making a decision is not, it's not, it's not very hard for me. But I want to do it right. But right now, I feel ignored and, and disrespected. And you know, it's not, it's not right. It's not about playing for the national team. But you call someone a national team captain without a phone call when decisions are being made. I hope this will be taken care of the best way it can. And uh, briefly, let's talk about. Uh your Europa League battle against Lazio on Thursday. That means you'll be doing battle against uh, your colleague, uh, Ogen Yonazi. Yeah, you know, I was rested. Um, I hope I fully, you know, come recover and come back strong for the game. It is a big game. It's a quarterfinal game. It's, this is quarterfinals. Any mistake you make is going to cost you, you know. We're playing at home in, in front of our great, great fans. It's going to be 60,000 full. So it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. Everyone is looking forward to this game, you know. We need to win this game. And for me, as a defender, you know, I prefer to take a clean sheet because the way it goes also count. You know, so it's a game that, you know, I have to really stand up and, you know, you know be in charge. I am my teammates. You can do it alone. I have a lot of... We, I'm also playing with all the defenders I'm competing with. They are also Turkish international central defenders. So they're experienced as well. So we're going to work very hard together to make sure that at least we keep a clean sheet and try and win the game and hopefully... You know, take it to, to Rome, to Lazio and, and, and get a draw. That would be great. And of course, let me also seize this opportunity to ask you, Galatasaray against Real Madrid. <laughs> wow, that's a massive game. That's a big game. You know, that's a big, it's a game that you know, I normally really don't watch football, but I, I do follow a lot of big games. So this is one game that I'm going to watch. It's Real Madrid, Galatasaray. You know, I want... You know, anything can happen. It's quarterfinals. You know, they are they are they are our big rivals. So I don't know if to wish them well. 
the Champions League uh, or not. But, you know, it's, it's going to be an entertaining football, so it's going to be exciting to watch. All right, Skipo, thank you so very much for speaking with us on Sports Radio Brie Life M. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Sports Radio, Brila FM.